Hey guys, today's video is going to be a straightforward deep dive into the Klipsch Nashville and the Klipsch Austin portable speakers. We're going to listen to some sound samples just to see how different they are in terms of performance, as well as talk about which one I am leaning more towards. Of course, having tested them for a bit, there are still some pain points worth talking about which I'll address later in this video. There is another one called the Detroit, but sadly, it's not launched in my country yet. So I'll be covering the Detroit as soon as I can get the Detroit into the studio. Get subscribed so you don't miss my review of the Clip Detroit. The Nashville is the bigger, more muscular option, obviously, with dual 2.25 inch drivers with dual passive radiators that extend the bass response. It's got 24 hours of juice in the box with the ability to reverse charge too at 10 watts, so you can use it as a backup power bank of sorts. And it's got a microphone also for hands-free calls. It's a great microphone with clean voice capture, especially when you're near the speaker. Take a look. Okay, right now I'm just in front of the speaker. This is what my voice sounds like. I'm going to move further away and see how well the speaker's microphone captures my voice. Okay. I'm going to do this as quickly as possible because there are ants around me. Okay, this is my voice. I'm standing around, I would say, two meters away or six feet. Yep. This is how it picks up my voice at 6 feet, moving back closer. And now I'm right in front of the speaker again. This is the Klipsch Nashville speaker's microphone. Now, the Austin's obviously the smaller speaker. It's got a single 1.5 inch driver with dual passive radiators with up to 12 hours of battery on a single charge. It doesn't have a microphone or the ability to reverse charge like the Nashville, but it's got a rubber band at the back which can be used to tether it to your belt, your back, it really is up to you where you want to tether this to. They both have app support via the Klipsch Connect app, which allows you to customize the sound of the speakers with a very simple three-band graphic EQ and a range of EQ presets. The settings do have a big impact on the sound, more on that later. And the app also allows you to receive firmware updates, turn off the function sounds, and access a shortcut to a curated Spotify playlist, courtesy of Klipsch. But that's about it. It's a very simple app. Both the Nashville and the Austin has a broadcast feature, which allows you to connect up to 10 plus other Klipsch speakers in a daisy chain, playing music in mono. But this seems to only work if it's the same line of speakers, like Nashville to Nashville, Austin to Austin. I tried connecting the Nashville with the Austin, and it did not work. Same goes with this other feature called True Wireless Stereo. If you've got two similar speakers, you can connect them together and make one the left channel and the other one the right channel. But it has to be with the same product. Regardless, how do they sound if they're standalone? Let's talk about the Nashville. It sounds punchy and rich, but what impressed me the most about the Nashville is its sound staging. Standing about 6 feet away, it feels like the sound stage extends about 3 feet to the left, right, and top of the speaker. It also sounded very loud and full at 50% volume, enough to fill a small living room. So that was quite impressive, but do note that you won't get that spacious effect if you're close to the speaker. It has to be at least 3 to 6 feet away. It also sounded very crisp in the midst, so if you want your vocals to have that spice and sparkle, don't play with the EQ, just leave it on the default tuning.
I did prefer the tuning to be a little less bright in the mids. Also wanted it to have more bass because you know me, I'm a bass head. So I jacked up its bass all the way to plus six. This for me is the best tuning, but otherwise the bass preset would work as well. Now, what happens when I push the volume up beyond 50% on the Nashville, even to near maximum? As you can hear, its bass gets overwhelmed by the mids, and at higher volume levels, vocals will distort heavily. So, this speaker is best enjoyed at ideally 50 to 60 percent volume. The Austin, of course, sounded like a smaller speaker in that it sounds thinner in the bass, the sound staging is also not as wide, and it's not as loud at 50 percent volume as. The Nashville, but it does retain that same emphasis in the mid range as the Nashville, especially in the Austin's upper mids. This makes the speaker sound crisp and sparkly. They're so similar in tuning that even the same custom EQ that I did for the Nashville will also make the Austin sound smoother and fuller. Again, the Austin's got very low distortion at 50% volume, just like the Nashville, but at high volume levels, you can expect its mid range to overwhelm the bass and start crackling. <laughs> Also, the threshold where this seems to happen seems to be a little lower than the Nashville, but just like the Nashville, you want to keep the Austin between ideally 50 to 60% volume for the tastiest sound. Ooh la la. These speakers aren't just from music. I also watched videos on them, and it seems that latency on these speakers are pretty low when watching YouTube. In televisions. Now, these being wrapped in silicone also makes the Jabra earbuds more comfortable to wear for long stretches. Some people may also prefer the device, including televisions. Now, these being wrapped in silicone also makes the Jabra earbuds more comfortable to wear for long stretches. Some people may also prefer. Okay, let's talk about the pros and cons of the Nashville and the Austin. They both feel insanely rugged with that rubberized vinyl surface and metal grill, and it really feels like it can take a beating. That's how rugged it is. It sounds really good and loud for the price, and I also like that their sound can be customized to what sounds best for me. They have multi-point pairing, which is awesome since I can connect both my main devices at the same time, namely my PC and my phone. And I didn't have any signal problems when switching between device A or device B. This really is a great selling point. I don't know why Clips didn't put it on their website. The button controls are very simple to operate. They both have a Bluetooth button, which does do pause and play, a power button, and volume control buttons. So very straightforward. The buttons do take a little effort to press, but for portable speakers, that's actually a good thing because if they're in your bag, this prevents accidental presses. Now, what I do wish could be better is how they both work with the Clips Connect app. Right now, it is not a smooth experience getting the app to recognize them, and every time I back out of the main menu, it 
takes a while to get fully connected again. No kidding, there was even once when the Nashville simply wasn't reconnecting to my phone, so I had to go into my phone settings, forget the device, and pair it all over again. So my experience with the Clips Connect app could have been better, could have been smoother. Also, it would be great if they both had a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. This not only gives you the option to skip the entire Bluetooth pairing process altogether, but it also extends its battery life further. Not a deal breaker by any means, but having a 3.5 millimeter jack is more of a nice to have. Now, between them, I actually prefer the Nashville. It's bigger than the Austin, so it's less portable, but I do prefer the way it sounds. And I don't need that much portability to begin with, since it's going to be a speaker that most of the time is going to sit in front of my computer anyway. Its microphone pickup's fantastic, so it's going to make a great hands-free speaker when I'm, say, video calling with my mom. No, I'm not a mama's boy, but yes, I love my mom. But some people who go hiking, biking, I can see the Austin being a fantastic way to get some personal audio on the go. It's very portable, it's got a strap behind so you can tether it to your bag, your belt, but also, like I said, I am leaning more towards the Nashville. So those were my thoughts about the Nashville and the Austin. What do you think? Leave your comments below. And if you want to see more reviews from this channel, get subscribed and tap the bell button to stay notified. I'm also on X where I post frequency response graphs of headphones and earbuds, so do follow me there and click here for my take on the Marshall Amberton 2 and the Marshall Whalen. These are some alternatives of these clip speakers that we are looking at here.